the first network intrusion detection system software that we're going to look at is one of the older ones. It's been around for a while, and it's Snort. So Snort is an open source piece of software, but there's also a commercial version that is available as well. We've got Snort, which is the open source, and it will run on both Windows as well as Unix-like operating systems like Linux or Mac OS, and there are a couple of components to it. The first thing is just the intrusion detection system itself, the software. So the other component is the set of rules. What we've got here, as you can see, are the rule sets that are potentially available. There's a couple of different ways of handling rules. One of the ways that you can handle rules is just to download the rules here and then install them to the IDS system that you've got in place, so whatever that happens to be, and we're going to install that here shortly. The problem is that the rules are being updated fairly regularly. And so what you can do is you can keep downloading the rules if you want, or you can install a rule manager. For example, you could install Oink Master, and we'll take a look at Oink Master in a little bit. But you could use one of those automated grab the latest rule sets pieces of software to keep your rules up to date. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do app-get install snort. And I'm going to do this on an Ubuntu system. There are some Linux distributions that do include snort packages. Others that don't include snort packages, you could also install it on FreeBSD, for example. What we've got for install packages are we've got some of the prerequisite pieces of software, the dependencies. And we've also got, as you can see, it's going to install Oink Master for us. So it's going to install the Rules Manager on our behalf. It's also going to install some default snort rules. So there's a package here for default snort rules. Now, of course, it's also going to install snort, snort common, snort common libraries as well. So we've got the entire set of packages. It's going to do some basic configuration for us. And what I want to do here is I'm actually going to just open up another terminal here and make sure that the interface is ETH0. It's actually not. It's ENS33 on this particular system. Pretty commonly on a Linux system, you're going to get ETH0. This is actually a virtual machine, and because it's a virtual machine, what it is installed for a network interface for us is ENS33. Now it's going to ask me for the range of the local network, and this happens to be my local network. So it's done some very basic configuration for us, and again, it's going to ask me what interface it should be listening on once it's configured Snort. So now we've got Snort installed at this point, and we can start looking a little bit more closely at the configuration settings, and we'll also take a look at the rules and how to keep those updated, and we'll do that coming up. Now that we've got Snort installed, we can go take a look at the configuration settings. So not uncommonly, we're going to go into Etsy, and then we're just going to go into Snort. So you can see there are a number of configuration files. The one that we're really going to be concerned with is actually snort.conf. And there's a couple of ones here. There's snort.debian.conf and snort.conf. And what we need to do is we need to figure out actually which one of those is going to be used. And there's a couple of places that we can look for that. So this may actually be in default snort. And so that's telling us that the snort user is snort and then var log snort, snort group is snort. So it's not actually there. So the other place that we can look to make sure that we're looking at the right configuration file is the service startup script. And that should give us an indication as to what configuration file it's actually going to use once it starts up. Because when it starts up, it's going to actually provide the configuration file. 
right here we can see that the config is snort.debian.conf. So that's the one that we're going to look at. In this particular case, it's actually very short. And what it does is it sets up the home network and then the interfaces. And then we've got some additional settings there that I'm less concerned about. So let's just take a look at the full snort.conf, which should be the entire set of configuration settings that are available here. And of course, we could grab additional configurations out of here if that's what we wanted to do. So we're setting a whole bunch of variables here for the home network. We've got some port variables, and then it's doing some configuration settings. So when Snort is actually doing the packet decoding, we're going to tell it what it's going to do, how it's actually going to work. So in this case, we're going to disable decode alerts. We're going to disable experimental TCP options. We're not going to alert on obsolete TCP options, and you can see some of the others here as well. Now we've got a number of other configuration settings that have been commented out. That's the hash sign or the pound symbol there that indicates that the line has been commented out. Here's an example. If you want to alert on whether the value in the length field is greater than the length of the packet, you would turn this particular configuration setting on. So lots of configuration settings. For the most part, unless you're really expert at doing this or you're really looking for something in particular, for the most part, your configuration settings that ship by default are going to be okay here. And later on, as we get further down, and this sets up a whole bunch of preprocessor rules, further down in the file here, there will be settings for how it's actually going to do logging. Now. What you're going to probably do here is you're probably going to accept the default, which is going to be the unified to log file. Now, there used to be settings for different log types. As I said, though, what you're probably going to do is just leave this setting alone, and then we'll deal with other programs, particularly Barnyard, that will actually read this unified output file, and that's going to be called snort.log right there. So there are a lot of configuration settings, as I said, and for the most part, you're going to leave those alone, particularly if you're working on an Ubuntu system or a Debian-based system that is actually doing some of the initial configuration for you and setting that up in snort.debian.conf, where it's setting the home network and it's setting the interface name for you. That's really the really important variables that Snort is going to use. Now you can see there's also a rules directory and we'll get into rules coming up a little bit later on. There are actually a few different ways that you can run Snort. The easiest way, and of course I'm running this as root because I am logged in essentially as the user root. If I weren't, I would use sudo in order to get root permissions because in order for Snort to function, efficiently or completely, we need to be running Snort as an administrative user. And so I'm running this as root. You can see I'm actually logged in here or effectively logged in as root. And the reason that I have to do that is in order to see all of the packets that come across a particular network interface, I need to set that interface into promiscuous mode. And in order to do that, I need to be root. So what I've got here is I'm just running snort as snort. And I'm getting some warnings here about no preprocessors configured for policy zero. So just running snort all by itself will certainly turn on promiscuous mode and get snort running, but it's really not going to do much of anything because there's no configuration along with it. What I can do here is I can say etsy snort snort.conf. And now it's actually running with all of the preprocessors set up and we're starting to grab all of the packets. Now we're actually running Snort as it was really intended to run with a bunch of preprocessor rules set up so that it can really look at the packets that it's getting and be able to do some analysis on it. I'm going to kill that because we're not really doing much of anything. You can see here that we've got 37 UDP sessions that were created. So we've got some statistics here. We've got all of four TCP sessions. 
so there really wasn't much of anything going on. Now, I could continue running it that way, and that would just kind of run and continue to look at packets and log. The other thing that I can do, I'm going to set the configuration file here, and I'm going to say etsy snort snort.conf. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read in a PCAP file. So if I have used TCP dump to grab some traffic, what I can do is I can run it against snort with the configuration and all of the rules that were in place. You can see that we've got one SSL packet that we've got. And if I were to scroll up, I would get some additional statistics from the packet capture. We've apparently got 125 UDP sessions, and it looks like 65,542 stream trackers created. And that's out of a total of 65,667 sessions. So what I actually did here was I created a PCAP and used a utility called HPing to just generate some bad traffic that I sent to a system on my local network. And so what Snort is actually doing is it's looking at that and doing some analysis based on all of the packets that were in the TCP dump PCAP that I grabbed. So we've got a breakdown by protocol. They're all Ethernet packets. They're all IPv4, other than 28, which were ICMP. And then we've got the number of UDP, TCP, and apparently there were some IPv6 frames there as well. Again, we've got another way of running Snort here, which is against a PCAP that you may have captured from another system. And you can run that PCAP against a Snort installation pretty much anywhere. The other way, of course, of doing this is to just say init.d snort and then start. And now what we've got is the Snort service that's running. And now it's just going to run in daemon mode in the background and be looking at all of the traffic that is passing across the interface and checking all of that traffic against the rules. Because Snort is a signature-based intrusion detection system, meaning we've got rules that we know what to look for in the packets or frames that are coming by. And so we're matching those rules against each individual frame, looking for specific signatures so that we can alert on the packets based on what's in that signature and what the rule says to do if the signature actually matches. And we'll take a look at what the rules actually look like coming up. Now that we've taken a look at actually running Snort and a couple of different ways that we can run it, let's see what it runs on. In other words, we're going to go take a look at the rules. So we're gonna go into Etsy Snort rules and these are just the rules that were installed when we did the installation. I haven't done anything else. So this is just what Ubuntu has installed for me for rules. So we can grab just one of these by random. Let's look at community web attacks, for example. So we're going to look at the community web attacks rules. Now, immediately, this looks really dense. And you really have to look very closely at this in order to be able to parse what it's actually doing. So we're going to generate an alert if it's a TCP packet. This is going to be from an external network, meaning anything that's not our home network on any port. So that's what this any means. And then that's going to my list of HTTP servers that's going to be in my configuration file on HTTP ports. Again, that's a variable that is set in the configuration file. This is my message. If this alert triggers, then we're going to log a message, community web attacks, Hydra activity detected. Now we've got some flow information to server and it's going to be established connections. The content is going to be user agent and there's going to be a 3A in the middle. Don't care about case. Content again, we're going to be looking for Hydra. Again, we don't care about case. This is actually a regular expression right here. So we're looking for this particular string using this regular expression. So the start of the line is going to be user agent. 
going to be looking for some white space. It's going to have Mozilla with some more white space in there. And then there's some hexadecimal characters in there as well. And you could look up what those actually were, 3A using an ASCII table as an example. We're going to be looking for that string in a regular expression. And again, if we match all of this, this is the signature right here. This entire line is really the rule. And then the signature is in the PCRI and the content fields within this rule. And then also in the rule, it says what the message is going to be. And then the port and host information. And based on this rule, if Snort actually finds a packet that matches this, again, it's going to generate that particular message. That is what a Snort rule looks like. Now, there are a number of other rules. They're going to look very similar. So let's take a look at DDoS rules, for example. And this actually, we don't have a lot of really complicated content, for example. So the very first one is a tribe flood network probe, TFN probe. And we're looking for content of one, two, three, four with an external net from any port to a home network, any port. And then we're looking for an ICMP ID of 678. So we're looking for a very particular type of ICMP frame coming in. The next one down is also ICMP. And again, we're looking for content here of a number of A's. And that's going to be Tribe Flood Network 2K or TFN 2K. And this is a potential TFN 2K message going through. And again, we can kind of look through the rest of these. And it really does look complicated if you just kind of quickly look at it. But if you really stop and look one word or one component at a time, it does start to make a little bit of sense. This is, again, going to be an alert. We're looking for ICMP protocol, external net, so anything that's not our home network on any port destined to, and that's what this arrow here is. It says going to my home network, again, any port, not that the port matters on ICMP because there are no ports. And then it generates the message. And then beyond that is just what does it actually look like? So the rest of that, for the most part, is the signature of what Snort should actually be looking for in order to determine whether we're going to match on this rule or not. So again, this is the set of rules that Ubuntu actually installed for us. And a little bit later on, we'll take a look at how to use something like Oink Master in order to get the latest rules on a scheduled basis rather than just taking these rules and never updating them. Because, of course, new attack types are coming out pretty regularly and new rules are being created in order to alert on those attack types. And so we do need to pay attention to new rules that are being created so that our network intrusion detection system is always up to date and alerting us on the latest malicious activity.